Hello everyone and welcome to EduSoils Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to start the final part of our discussion on shock which is basically based on the 2024 article which you can see on your screen came in the International Journal of Emergency Medicine very nicely describes the initial management or the generic management of the shock. Okay, minutes is the mnemonic. So we will look at each part one by one. When we talk of M, it is the first initial resuscitation and which is now combined with what is given in the ATLS. Okay, the trauma life support as well, which is maintain the airway breathing and circulation. So when we look at airway, when does it need attention, especially in cases of maxillofacial fractures or when the Glasgow comma score is less than or equal to 8, when you are suspecting laryngeal or tracheal injuries. What are the symptoms and signs? A very simple way to assess the airway is if the person can speak clearly, usually the airway is intact. Okay, So they'll ask the person where he or she is, what the name is, if they can answer without feeling breathless or without any issues, then usually the airway is intact. Move the neck. Okay, look at signs of injury and rule out C-spine injuries. Okay, so what are the specific symptoms and signs for airway? Agitation is a feature of hypoxia, whereas octandation is a feature of hypercarbia. So a drowsy patient more likely to be hypercarbic whereas agitated patients more likely to be hypox. You can look at cyanosis in the extremities, the lips, the ear lobes, accessory muscles being used for respiration, hoarseness, stridor, subcutaneous emphysema, a visible or palpable fracture, reduced air entry in one side of the lungs, paradoxical breathing, low saturation on pulse, oximetry. All these signs need to be assessed when you are looking at Air interventions are chin lift, jaw thrust, nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal airway, laryngeal mask airway, laryngeal tube airway, definitive airways can be endotracheal intubation or needle or surgical cricothyroidotomy. When we want to assess B, A, B, C, B, breathing well enough to speak clearly, and the issues here include tension or open pneumothorax, hemothorax or tracheobronchial injuries. The predominant intervention for the breathing part is chest tube insertion or definitive airway establishment. When we talk of circulation and stop bleeding, basically ABC is circulation and stop bleeding. Okay, You have to see Okay, if there is blood loss or fluid loss, it's usually visible. Okay, Pulse, blood pressure, capillary refill, mental status basically help you in assessing C. Aggressive and continuous volume and blood resuscitation is the predominant intervention. So once you have seen airway, treated the airway, look at breathing, treat the issues with breathing, look at circulation. And that is basically what we are going to discuss in detail henceforth in this presentation on shock. So as we all know, there are four classes of hemorrhage. So this is basically for oligemic shock. Okay. So you are looking at the tennis class. Why it is known as the tennis class? Very easy to see. If you see the game of tennis, it is 15, 30, 40 and you win the game right? in a tennis. Similarly, here the class 1 is 15%, class 2 is 15 to 30%, class 3 is 30 to 40, class 4 is more than 40. What is this percentage? It is percentage of blood loss, right? So, tennis is an important way to understand these classes because they are difficult to remember otherwise. So, 15, 30, 40, more than 40, just like a game of tennis. Remember the first two and the last two when it comes to BP. In the first two, BP is normal. In the last two, the BP decreases. When it comes to urine output, it starts decreasing. 0.5 ml per kg per hour is reached in class 1 but not reached in class 2, 3 and 4. So this table is something that is commonly asked in exams. Remember the tennis classes and remember the features that you need to see to ascertain the severity of bleeding.
Now we come to infusion. So in the minutes, the INN stand for infusion and investigation. Infusions, we are looking if at sepsis guidelines, they say 30 ml per kg in three hours and reassess. However, the newer guidelines say that you give 10 ml per kg in one hour and then reassess because three hours is a long time to reassess. Okay. And this also avoids fluid overload. So you don't even want fluid overload in patients on shock and you don't want hypovolemia also in patients on shock. Okay. So aggressive fluid resuscitation for say diseases like pancreatitis and sepsis vis-a-vis -a, -vis a conservative fluid resuscitation with earlier reassessment is the debate that is ongoing. However, if there is cardiogenic or obstructive shock, you know that the volume is normal. So these patients will not benefit from large volume resuscitation. So in these cases, what is important is vasopressor. Okay? The target is mean arterial pressure greater than 65 mmHg. So whenever you give infusions or you give vasopressor, you look at mean arterial pressure greater than 65 millimeters urine output greater than 0.5 ml per kg per hour and capillary refill less than 3 seconds. When we come to shock, neuroadrenaline is usually the first choice if required. Investigations, the most important one is a blood gas, right? A venous blood gas or an arterial blood gas. Arterial is difficult to find sometimes in shock because the pulsations are not readily palpable. Venous blood gas is good enough. CBC creatine in electrolytes, cross match because you will need blood, you may need FFPs, you may need platelets if you are triggering a massive transfusion and cardiac markers if you are suspecting cardiac shock. So once you have done the early management or the ABC and you have taken care of starting the infusions and sending the investigations, that is when you can use this upcoming modality or something that is already established in higher volume centers is the ultrasound. Okay. Rapid ultrasound for shock and hypotension. The mnemonic for it is hide map. Okay. The hide map is the areas that you see in this rush ultrasound. Okay. Basically, rapid ultrasound for shock and hypotension known as rush. Mnemonic is hide map, that is heart, IVC, DVT, ectopic pregnancy, Morrison's pouch, aorta, and pulmonary. So basically, you look at all these areas, and most of the time, you will get the cause for your shock. The sequencing of where to put the probe, you have nine different points where you put the probe. Okay, the parasternal long cardiac view helps you in a set giving a Look at overall picture of the heart functioning. The apical four chamber cardiac view is also important. Inferior vena cava view, Morrison's and splenorenal basically, bladder view, aorta, and pulmonary views. So, once you have had your ultrasound probe, rapid ultrasound for shock and hypotension has a sequencing, and this is what you look at. In heart, you can identify heart failure, pulmonary embolism valve related issues as well as tamponade. IVC, if it's collapsed IVC, we are looking at low CVP. If it's distended IVC, we are looking at high CVP. Collapsed IVC means fluid loss or vasodilatation. So we are looking at hypovolemia or distributive shock. Distended IVC is basically high CVP, high volume looking at cardiogenic or obstructive shock. So this is how you can make your differential diagnosis with the help of this important tool now in managing patients that is the rapid ultrasound, right? Other important point when you are seeing IVC is you can also assess the adequacy of fluid therapy. If the IVC is collapsed, you know that you can give more fluids. If it's a distended IVC, you are not looking at hypovolemia as the cause. Aggressive fluid resuscitation can stop. So this is something that is very important and something that can also give you an etiological idea. Okay, If hide map can show you etiologies for shock, you can focus your management towards treating the underlying etiology. 
So if you are suspecting sepsis, the important points are early antibiotics, cultures, blood culture, urine culture, based on the source of sepsis, the cultures need to go and source control. If there is abscess, you need abscess drainage and so on and so forth. If the cause is hemorrhage, then bleeding control is important. Transfusion, treatment of coagulopathy, hypothermia and acidosis. So prevention of coagulopathy, hypothermia and acidosis, which is the lethal trial. <clears throat> if pathology is in the heart, then medical and inter interventional management of coronary pathologies, pulmonary embolism, you manage the PE, cardiac tamponade, you can manage the cardiac tamponade. If it's hypoadrenal or neurogenic shock, then steroids can help. So basically treat the etiology, but this is after the management that we have discussed so far. So maintain ABCs, infusions, investigations, then look at the ultrasound, MINU, and then start treating the etiology. If you do all of this in your patient in the prescribed time, remember that so far the patient has been you only for up to 30 minutes. Okay. So if you see this slide so far between 0 and 10 minutes, you have finished the MIN, which is the most important part. You have done your ultrasound and identified the cause and you have started treating the etiology. Then in the first half an hour, you can achieve stabilization of your patient. So basically a very good article, something that gives you a very nice and practical approach in generic management of the shock. And then based on the types of shock, you can discuss and treat your patient further and save the patient's life. Thank you.